me to, to immigration service. I said, I have some more questions for the immigration service, and I keep asking them those questions. Is it true that some of those that Mr. Techi promoted to, uh, from ACI to DCOI have never been uh, supervised a sector, let alone a region, and yet officers such as uh, those have been demoted from regional commanders down to sector commanders? Is it true? And yesterday I asked you, show me where in Adenta you have a sector office. No office, no offices, no infrastructure, zero. Adenta, Chifu Pras, so show me where the offices are. And that some of those people have been promoted to DCOIs have all their entire life in the Ghana Immigration Service, unlike those demoted regional, co uh, regional commanders, four or five of them, been overworked only in Accra. True or false? You have said in that your agenda you wrote to me that uh, uh, transfers are, is, not a, is not a punishment. I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. But why have you kept some people close to you and you have not transferred them and you keep promoting them? Three ranks in five years. I'm asking you. I told you don't cross the line. I am asking you that you have promoted people who just got onto certain ranks. Over and above those who have stayed on certain ranks for six years. Two weeks ago you did promotion. I lie. Two weeks ago Friday. I'm asking you, do, are you still aware that those receipt issuing syndicates, the corruption, the money under the table like Nanado spoke about, which is why you have centralized all permits renewal for foreigners at the headquarters. Mm -hmm. So regional commanders can no longer do that. And they have to bring the money in hard cash. If the Ghana Immigration Service Clinic at the, at the headquarters Belongs to the immigration service, like you say. Why, why are you paying money to St. John's Fertility Center to manage it? If it belongs to you, why are you paying rent to yourself? I'm asking you simple questions. And you see, you are the same compound with the soldiers, right? They come there, the veterans, they come there, the soldiers, they come there. They see some of the officers and they ask themselves, ah, did they go through body selection? Because when you put those 84,000 people at Elwak, and each time you have the, what you call it, the recruitment, you tell them, oh, you have to get the right height, you got to get this, that, 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 that. And they come and they see certain heights in uniform and people who are sometimes less than two years in the service already pregnant. After they were recruited, they start asking and doubting you. Mm -hmm. They doubt you. Because they are also, they are, they are the military. But you are a paramilitary organization. They ask questions. The list is five years. One year, two years, they are already pregnant. Did you bring them there to be pregnant so that you increase the population of Ghana or what? I've asked you about medical insurance. Medical uh, allowance, sorry. Mr. Teshi, you benefited from medical allowance. Now you are saying that, oh, it's become a burden on the immigration service, and so you are not able to pay. Are, you, are your numbers more than that of the military, the police, the fire service, the prisons? I'm asking you. Now you have taken delight in appointing chief superintendents over their seniors to be in positions that are meant for commissioners. And why is there no commissioner of immigration? Are you afraid that when you leave, somebody has to climb up? Somebody went for you to come. I'm, I'm looking at the system. You made it about an individual situation. You have an immigration regulation, LI-2245. You quote it at your convenience. I've asked you, you have to go, per that, that regulation, you have to go through, through a certain process to get promoted. Sit for an exam, go for an interview. The people you have promoted three times in five years, did they satisfy that? Some who you call from interdiction to promote, did they satisfy that? And I'm saying if we live in a serious country, some of you would have gone home. If we live in a serious country with an interior minister who is hearing, some of you would have gone home. There would have been a shake-up at this time. If we had a commander-in-chief who is a listening commander-in-chief, some of you would have left. I'm speaking facts and figures. I'm not conjecturing.
Because I told you I started gathering from February. I finished my gathering. So you can beat our journalists like you did. Your immigration police, they beat Joseph Armstrong. You asked that he comes in. Then you said he should not come in. And then they manhandled him. And then you called clandestinely behind to apologize. And you want to talk to me about regimental space. In the regimental space, there's order, there's discipline. Is that the kind of discipline you teach your officers? To molest people who are going about their normal duties? Did you molest Aisha Wan? When you were busy giving her whatever it is on Sunday? Then he take me to the NIA. And we're wrapping up. I'm connecting the two. I'll come back to you. There are some more questions you must answer. Now, I've said that let the retirees go and let the young grow. I said it. And I've seen that people are leaving. See, Ghana Education Service, after I did handing over certificates, they are writing it nicely and they are leaving. You have to go because... In a society like Africa, you have to go so that your children and grandchildren can also get jobs. Now, that's not it. Show me the NIA. Okay, let's stick with the Constitution. Article 199, retiring age and pension is in our Constitution. A public officer shall, except as otherwise provided in this Constitution, retire from the public service on attaining the age of 60 years. It's a constitutional provision. Two. A public officer may accept, as otherwise provided in this constitution, retire from the public service at any time after attaining the age of 45 years. Three, the pension payable to any person shall be exempt from tax. Four, notwithstanding clause one, which is the 60 years of this article, a public officer who has retired from the public service after attaining the age of 60 years may wear the exigencies of the service required be engaged for a limited period of not more than two years at a time, <clears throat> but not exceeding five years in all, and upon such terms and conditions as the appointing authority shall determine. Now, this provision is, is hinged on the fact that whoever is being retained has a certain special skill that nobody else within the establishment has, which is why they will be kept. And while they, were, they are being kept, they will have to transfer that knowledge. The president has to be explaining to us why he has a sweet delight for giving uh, retirees uh, contract extensions and, and renewing those contract extensions. While they have told young people that the payroll is choked, old people have jobs. They have bread and extra bread. They have their retirement package sorted for them, like I showed you at article 199. And then they have extra bread coming to them. I have no problem with their consultants or whatever, board chairman from afar. But where they are in the establishment. So NIA, there's an HR person and a lawyer, 66 years. Using official vehicle. Has been around since 2021, when the contract died. Professor Tifo, are you aware? Professor, for you, you are getting to 63. So you, two are, you have gone past the retirement age. Your director of operations, the kennel, he has also gone past 60. A lie? And I, good morning to you. Danny, there's a letter I sent you from the judicial, and that's the last one. Then we'll go. Then we'll go. Let, let's go. Let's finish. So, and I, good morning to you. Is that the reason why our, our Ghana card generation has been at a slow pace? Now, extension of contract. Please refer to number blah, 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 dated 10 July 2018 from the Office of the Attorney General Ministry of Justice in view of the approval for the Office of the President. Financial clearance thereby granted the Attorney General and Ministry of Justice to engage the services of Mrs. Yaa Tefua, a Chief State Attorney and Acting Corporate Administrator on a two-year post-retirement contract. Mind you, it's the same government that wrote through Abinasari and told us that we have stopped contract extensions. I showed you that letter. When I started this, let the retirees go. So, Ajana 1, Ajana 2. Say one thing, do something else. Now, it says, approval is hereby granted for a monument to be charged against the compensation of employees' vote of the Ministry of Justice. And well, This appointment takes effect from 2nd June 2018. Terminates on 1st June 2020. It expires. 
By a copy of this letter, the controller and counter general is requested to effect the payment of a salary effect from the date of resumption of duty. Okay. Now, there's uh, another letter. It says, application. This is the letter that applied for it. So, if the thing has died, I wish to apply for financial clearance to enable the controller and accountant general cater for the salary of me in the Achina Etefua, chief state attorney with effect from 1st June 2022. The thing, the first one died in 2020. You are a young person. You have finished your degree. You have finished your HND. You have finished your diploma. You don't have a job, but you are supporting. Let the retirees go and let the young grow. Let the retirees go and let the young grow. Don't eat the bread of your children and your grandchildren. It is a curse. Good morning.